moving ahead with a very significant, uh, with a very significant uh, theme of the opening plenary session, spotlight on businesses gaining greater relevance with changing tides of time, needs for law and policy for new age businesses. At the start, we are delighted to have amongst us for the keynote address, Anand Desai, Managing Partner, DSK Legal. Anand has been the managing partner of DSK Legal since its inception in April 2001. With over three decades of wide ranging experience in both contentious and non-contentious work across a wide range of practice areas, Anand has been a respected and sought after counsel serving several large Indian and multinational corporations, business leaders, Bollywood listers, amongst others. Anand's expertise is recognized in mergers and acquisitions, private equity, dispute resolution, real estate, insolvency, restructuring, white collar crime, media, entertainment, technology, amongst others. He's widely recognized and regarded as a professional who takes a fair and practical approach to enable resolution of matters. He has been listed for many years as one of the leading lawyers in India by Who's Who Legal, Chambers Asia Pacific, Chambers Global Legal 500, amongst others. So Abbasar, as we take the deliberations forward at Gen Next 2022 with a very significant theme of spotlight on businesses gaining greater relevance with changing tides of time, need for law and policy for new age businesses, we are delighted to welcome for the keynote address, Sri Anand Desai Ji, Managing Partner, DSK Legal. A very Warm greetings. Welcome, Anand Desai. Anandji, please. Thank you for the very kind introduction. And thank you, Akriti and Legal Era. I echo what Mr. Rajiv Chopra just said about the contribution that Legal Era and Akriti have made to our legal community in India. And uh, I will say it again, but I'm saying it now keep up the good work. It's been amazing to see how you brought our community together and how you're promoting events which assist in sharing knowledge, sharing ideas, and moving forward. So thank you for that. And thank you, Mr. Chopra, for a very interesting uh, opening. It really is interesting to see how different roles are played out by GCs, corporate council, law firms, individual lawyers, and counsel who appear in courts. The topic is, I think, very relevant at a time when the world is seeing tremendous change on uh, what was considered to be, by many, a fairly stable economic balance that had been struck. India is making great moves and strides to attract investment, attract manufacturing. We hear the finance minister, the prime minister and others talking about the opportunities that India presents. And I think all of us as part of the ecosystem need to understand how we can contribute, whether it's ease of doing business in India, whether it's assisting in participating in discussions on policies required, laws that may be required, amendments to laws that are required. Stepping back from our point of view as a legal community, we have come from a background of several very old statutes. When I say old, meaning they've been written many years ago, as we know. They stood the test of time, whether there's a contract act, transfer property act, et cetera, et cetera. And we also have the new laws policies and regulations to deal with 
what we are seeing as an emerging and almost all pervasive activity. So the information age came upon us, the digital age came upon us, the remote working has come upon us. From anywhere in the world today, people can access, like we are doing today, a visual, an audiovisual feed, a contract. There are programs like DocuSign that let you sign a contract from a remote place without even printing it or downloading it other than to see it and click on the signature page. The days of having to initial each page on a physical copy are no longer a requirement in such technologies. Digital signatures have emerged. As we know, the Evidence Act has been amended with the introduction of the 65B certificate, as we call it. And yet, things are moving so fast that even some of these changes that have been brought about are requiring more and more to stay relevant. Otherwise, obsolescence comes in. As we know, misuse is also prevalent. Today, social media can make or destroy an idea, a product, a service. And it's almost impossible as of now to control it. As technology keeps advancing, that's going to be even more difficult. Age of data affects our privacy. We don't yet have it. It has been withdrawn for now. It should come in soon. But again, it'll have to take into account what people anticipate is going to be the methodology going forward as well, and not just what we have today. Another interesting aspect which I'd like to talk about is the information age and the availability of data as we now have it has actually been recognized to bring about what has been described as intellectual laziness. There's a lot of dependence today on technology for many functions that used to be done in our own brain, in our own way, in terms of exerting effort, which is very easily available. It's not a right and a wrong. I'm not suggesting there's a good and bad. It's a reality we have to live with. And therefore, to encourage correct usage, encourage correct application of mind in these things, especially for our fraternity, which is seeking to bring about a framework at all times, which is sustainable, fair, transparent, and enforceable, is something that I think will require a lot of thought, a lot of discussion to bring about what hopefully will stay at least for some years as a relevant way of communicating, acting, behaving, etc. We are seeing a lot of activity today in terms of defamation being actionable, not only individuals, even organizations. Defamation can sometimes be said to have been committed by a junior person, an unauthorized person, but it can affect the business or the family or the community in almost unimaginable ways, given the way things spread, leak, are put into forms through technology that were never intended, etc. Coming to matters such as what we call a confidential agreement or a confidential document or a confidential piece of information. As we know today, a lot of the discovery, due diligence, etc., is done online. We often do not go to a physical location to see physical documents while conducting such exercises. And therefore, security becomes critical. And yet, as we also know, normally a lock is not created till the old one is broken. So it's a catch-22 situation. And with technology moving as fast as it is, that itself presents a host of challenges and we'll keep presenting them as we go forward. We have today on our servers, computers, data centers, 
cloud, etc. Enormous amounts of information, enormous of all shapes, sizes, forms, and content. Again, how is that being used, misused, etc. is a question mark. And going forward, I think even that has to be addressed very, very carefully. So to what extent can law and policy regulate what we are seeing as almost an explosion of technology development, data development, data sharing, and the way we live our lives. For example, today, like I said earlier, a document can be signed online by a person who you do not even know where the person is located by, for example, the DocuSign or similar programs. As we know, traditionally, our concept of jurisdiction was based upon a physical location as far as the geographical jurisdiction is concerned. And that is a question mark today as to where will it lie. And I know that it keeps getting raised. Decisions come. The decisions may not be relevant given the change of technology. Similarly, things like what is a valid communication? What is valid service? So the reason I'm raising, I don't have answers, let me tell you, because I'm not a technology person, but I think it's bringing about clearly a thought process that we need to work very closely as lawyers with those who understand technology, who are developing technology, the relevant government authorities, the relevant leaders in corporates, we'll also necessarily need to take many factors into account as we go forward. And policies need to be therefore broader based again, going back to the old statutes I mentioned, the draft over a century in some cases. It permitted on a broad base, a recognition of what was considered to be a transaction, what was considered to be defamation, for example, et cetera. And I think that is going to be the key to have less prescriptive and more descriptive law and policy changes coming in, which hopefully will stand the test of time for many years to come, as our old statutes have done. So again, thank you for the opportunity and good luck for all the other participants and for the entire conference and look forward to many, many more such interactions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Anand Desai, partner DSK Legal for that ma managing part. But thank you very much, Mr. Anand Desai, managing partner DSK Legal for the very significant inputs with respect to the theme of our opening plenary session, presenting new insights on how to deal with uh, new businesses and the new business era. Thank you so much. Mr. Anand Desai, Managing Partner, GSK Legal. Our gratitude. Thank you so much.